there's there's always been um, a little bit of interest and always a lot of talk about high frequency trading and obviously it's been um, in the news it's been on uh, all the uh, market channels it's always a topic of discussion in the Wall Street Journal it's uh, a very high level discussion uh, with Mary Shapiro at the SEC and with uh, uh, Gensler on the CFTC and obviously now different committees being put together in the government to try and understand it, uh, try and understand what happened during the flash crash uh, in May, if it was uh, them or parts of them that were responsible for that. Uh, I think what, 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 what people need to understand is that, you know, it's really kind of interesting when you get to be as old as me and uh, not as old as Fari, obviously, but when we, you get to be that age, you uh, have a lot of different terminology. You have a lot of different uh, labels that are stamped to different activities. And I think what you now see is an example of that. Uh, high, high frequency trading, uh, if I had to describe what it is or define what it is, it's uh, entering orders, entering quotes as quickly as possible, uh, either interfacing and acting against the market and canceling. Uh, when you think of what I did as a market maker, uh, I was another form of a high frequency trader. The only difference was I had to be in the market for a sustained time. Uh, I wasn't able to get in and get out as quickly as you're seeing these uh, different firms. So what's the advantage to them? What are they doing? What's the purpose of what they're trying to accomplish? Yeah, there you go, right. Yeah. So, you know, when, when, when what are they trying to accomplish? Well. In high frequency trading, what's the goal? Let's be as close to the exchange as possible with all our servers and our technology so that we can enter an order and cancel an order faster than anybody in the marketplace. If I can create that edge, that obviously gives me the advantage of being able to see the market and react against it. So that's what the, the race to technology is. When you think about, all right, what's the, the algorithms that support that? What's behind that? Well, you got all this quantitative logic and algorithms that are being created for all by all these banks, the Goldman Sachs's, uh, the Citi's, the J.P. Morgan's, the Morgan Stanley's, of uh, trying to take data and backtest the marketplace uh, to different uh, movement, uh, different studies. Very similar to what Fari's doing. Uh, Fari does a lot of technical analysis. They do a lot of that same technical analysis, and now they're doing it where they're studying the changing of the markets, the changing of, of particular options, the changing of option changes, the change of the volatility, uh, how fast the markets are moving. Uh, they do all this analysis and they back test. Now they look at where are there opportunities for them to interface high speed technology to take advantage of a couple things. One, if we have a way to see orders coming into the system faster than anybody, we can react to them faster than anybody else and trade with them therefore taking away edge that someone else might have seen had they been given the opportunity. They also look at the marketplace and they look at the, what is the available liquidity. Now when you talk about liquidity, that means uh, how much is offered or bid for at a certain price for a certain strike. Very much like the stock. When they look at the, you, you look at a, a ladder chart of stock for the bid and offer, just as much as Farah explains that when he goes through talking about the E-minis, you see the different levels of bids and offers and the different sizes that are related to those levels. Well, when you think about the option world, and just think about what we just did with equalities. What did I just show you? Long stock is equal to long call and short put. Well, you know, look at the screen I got right here in front of you on Google. All right? Let's, 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 let's see if I could uh, not mess the screen up first. Okay? Uh, let me see. I can't do it with that. Let me try it with this. Okay. I have to dis. I have to take off my pen first. Pardon me for a second, please. Because this is a, a very good explanation of this that I think. Uh, um, all right. If I take uh, and extend out all the months here, which are in in, in just Google. I have some of the strikes. I don't have all the strikes. I don't have the months. But based upon what I just told you, I told you that every call and every put is equal to stock. All right, now, if they're making markets in every call, every put, hundreds or thousands or 500s of these in each strike, 
and you aggregated each strike up, how many total shares do you think would be bid for office uh, based upon those combos or those equalities? You think it'd be a little bigger than what they're showing for size up here? Okay, you probably got a market in Google on any given moment that's probably 500 to 1,000 shares up because it's a $500 stock. And if you look at the options that are being quoted, this is the amazing part. It amazes me beyond belief. And now someone's taking advantage of it. I, I thought it would take them only a few years, but they managed to wait 15 years after I left. Is that if someone were to go into the marketplace and buy calls and sell puts in 10 strikes all at once against the people making the markets, what do those people making the markets have to do? They have to go in there and they have to buy stock. Well, if someone goes in with high frequency orders and sells puts and buys calls, getting long stock, and let's say they do it in about 10 strikes for about, let's say, 50 lots a piece, all right? What is that? 10 times 50, 500 times 100? That's 50,000 shares? And there's only 1,000 offered? Well, the people that have to buy stock against buying those puts and selling those calls, what do they do for a hedge? They're in a panic mode. Some of them have auto hedge on, which is looking for the stock they need to buy to cover that sell of the call and buy of the put. And the stock makes this dramatic move. That's where manipulation through the high frequency trading allows them to get an edge. That's where when you look and think about what happened in May, is if all these market makers that are a victim of this all of a sudden pull their quotes, what happens? You have huge gaps in the liquidity of the market. And that's what causes these big, big exaggerated moves. So when you think of some high frequency trading algorithms, they're looking at how can I take advantage of any possible liquidity aberrations where I could force the market to make a big move one way or the other and take advantage of that. So a combination of that and a combination of algorithms and a combination of trends and a combination of any type of technical analysis and backtesting has created this program trading called high frequency trading. Seeing markets reacting to them faster than anybody else. Going into the market and manipulating them faster than anybody else. Taking an opportunity to interface and get response immediately. That's why the market is now 75% program trading versus just five, six years ago when it was only 25 to 30%. So you can see what's happening in the evolution of the marketplace. Technology, 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 uh, capital, capital, capital is out there interfacing with the, market, the marketplace. What needs to happen and what your major market players are asking for is for the market to be slowed down with the technology to let it become real trading again as opposed to just blinking lights, which in many cases it is. Which is why hopefully with Fari's prognostication, which with our teaching of all the different option strategies, you'll have an arsenal and ability to compete because you'll be able to pick your spots because remember what I've always talked about when we discuss trading psyche, discipline. You have to have certain disciplines. You have to know when you want to get into the market. Far is giving you opportunities to buy and sell. You need to examine the uh, stock that we're in. Look for the strategy that fits your capital. Look for the strategy that fits your uh, uh, points where you think you'd like to capture a profit. Where are you going to put in your stops as far as your sales to make sure you don't take a big loss and you reduce your, your uh, loss and, uh, if the prognostication of the strategy is wrong. A combination of all those assets will allow you to be able to be very small in the marketplace because you can see there's a lot bigger players out there and you cannot be in their way. And even market makers of my magnitude, if I was down there in this day and age, I would have a tough time in this environment because of the technology and the capital that's being thrown at it by the major banks.